On Monday and Tuesday, heads of state and government authorities will intervene in a UN General Assembly, but it will be virtual because of the pandemic. It's an important moment for the heads of state to come and to kind of track what the UN is doing right with regard to the pandemic and also what, what it's doing wrong and what the international situation of human rights is specifically with regard to the pandemic. Elissa Corin has been closely following the UN's activities on behalf of Alliance Defending Freedom, an organization that protects life, the family, and religious freedom. She is concerned that some UN bodies will use the pandemic to promote measures in favor of abortion. Just last week, for instance, um, the Secretary General gave a speech to a town hall meeting and he identified reproductive health services, uh, which is abortion, as the number one response that the UN should have with regard to the pandemic. So these are the kinds of things that we would like to see heads of state responding to, to really um, give their national positions in terms of whether or not this is the things that the UN should be saying. Last week, member states voted on a resolution on anti-coronavirus measures. The Vatican's permanent observer was surprised that they should include so-called reproductive rights. The idea also surprised the U.S., which had voted against that resolution. When Pope Francis spoke five years ago before the General Assembly, he asked for the protection of life in all its stages. Y el absoluto respeto de la vida en todas sus etapas y dimensiones. In the fight against the coronavirus, the Vatican also asks that future vaccines be made available to everyone. It calls for measures to help the elderly, a reform of the international economic system, and a reduction of poor countries' debts.